Hi everyone and welcome to the Pitchfork Fiber Podcast. My name is Hunter and I'll be your host today. And this is episode number eight. So thank you so much for joining us again if you are coming back to watch this podcast. If you're new, thank you so much for coming and checking me out. I hope you like what you see in here. And um, if you would like to see more, make sure you subscribe and like this um, video so you can see more to come. Um, if you have been watching previously, this was supposedly supposed to be the last time I podcasted. Last episode was the last time I was supposed to podcast in this location here in Phoenix, Arizona. However, surprise, surprise, I am back and I'm here again to podcast one more time before I leave. So today is the 21st, 22nd of July. Today is the 22nd of July and I am leaving for Chicago in just two weeks. I'm so excited. I can't even, I can't even, well I leave in less than two weeks, but I arrive in about two weeks. I'm so excited to be moving um, to where I'll be starting grad school in Chicago and I'm just there's a lot to ha there's a lot going on but I'll talk about that later because um, as you know there's a lot of things that are going on and I'll, I like to chat about that up towards the end but first I want to start off with what I have been making etc and I Surprise, surprise! I have a finished object. I'm very, very, very excited because this um, has taken me many months. Um, about half, a little bit more than half of a year. So maybe like seven, about seven months because I started this project right around the, the new year, in the end of December of 2016. So this has been a work in progress, but it's a large, a really large project. So this is um, the Shockwave Shawl. I'm going to talk about it and then I'll show you. Um, this is the Shockwave Shawl. It's a large um, striped, but also kind of faded um, shawl that's kind of like a giant scarf. It's just really wide and it's really long. So that, some backstory. When I was looking at this, I saw this on Instagram, um, and it's Hedge Fog, Hedge Hedge Fog, Hedgehog Fibers, um, the dyer. I forget her name, but she is the designer of this pattern. And I saw it on her Instagram, and I was like, "That is so awesome!" Knowing that I'll be um, possibly moving to the colder weather from Arizona, I was like, "I want this." And I saw it a lot of in a lot of photos, and it just looked cool with every color. And so while I was in Chicago um, a year ago, I had bought a couple skeins of yarn that I knew I wanted to make into like one giant piece. And so many of you have heard the story before. However, I have made a scarf or shawl out of all of my Chicago yarns and so each one reminds me of something and I talked about this in last episode um, I don't necessarily know all of their colorway names um, just because through moving and being in different places I don't really remember necessarily um, however I have it it turned out ginormous um, on Ravelry, after looking at people's notes, uh, that was a theme that they were saying that it grows about, it grows, I mean, almost double. And I did not plan on blocking it aggressively at all. Like, I wasn't even going to pin it. I, I, was, I was just going to soak it and, like, lay it out to dry. Um, and so I thought, oh, it won't grow too giant. Boy, was I wrong. This, this shockwave shell, I measured it exact, it, like I measured it, and it is exactly 120 inches long. That is 10 feet long. 10 feet. It is 10 feet long. I, okay, I'm just going to show you. So, here is, here it is. Like, this is a blanket. It's folded many times. It's just, it looks so nice folded up. 
and this is, it smells unbelievably. I have some Tuft Woolens. If you don't know Tuft Woolens, um, follow them on Instagram. I'll put a link right here. Tuft Woolens is a, um, a woman, she dyes, dyes. She makes soaps and different types of um, kind of product in Colum from Columbus, Ohio. And that's where I am originally from. And so I, f I don't even remember. I think it was Molly from the Homespun House um, podcast and Yarns. I saw her, I was watching hers, and I saw that she uses Tuft Woolen sock wash, or it's like a bar of soap, and that's what she uses, rather than necessarily like wool wash. Um, and I was like, that's cool. And I went on Etsy, looked it up, and they it's made like 10 miles from where, my ha where I um, grew up in Ohio. And so while I was home, I ordered some, and um, I bought quite a bit. And... I, it has lasted me so long and it smells so amazing every I got a sampler pack so I could test like little small ones and it, they're amazing so this smells like so nice it smells so nice and these colors are so great so this first this is the first color and this one reminds me of um, Monet lily pads and the the different beautiful paintings of him and so that reminds me of my time at the Art Institute of Chicago and then I'm just gonna unravel this so I blocked it and it blocked I mean the definition it blocked perfectly I mean I didn't pin this or anything it blocked perfectly I'm so happy with the way it came out but okay we start with it's huge so I'm going to get ready to stand up because this is gonna be okay so I wove the ends in, but I haven't like snipped them yet. I just have to snip them. I wove them in, blocked it, and then I just have to trim them. But um, I'm showing this to you backwards. So um, here, this is, I love the detail of the end, how it, um, with the i cord binding, bind off, and it has, like as I showed you before, it um, it's like, angled with the increases and decreases so it isn't just straight across so we go from this beautiful color um, striping in with this mad beautiful madeline tosh and this really beautiful yellow color i think this is the candle wick colorway might be mistaken but i believe it is so i striped it there and you can see like the striping comes out unbelievably when you block it it didn't come out this beautiful like you it was beautiful but you couldn't tell the definition of the lines until you block it and so it really evens out and you can see how crisp those lines are and the the yarn over um the yarn overs are beautiful so we go into this and then we're fading into the madeline tosh yoko colorway which i bought from nina chicago which is a beautiful yarn store in Wicker Park. So now we're getting into this really pretty, I mean, so nice. And I chose the yellow after I chose this beautiful speckled Malintosh. So that was kind of like, I liked bringing out the yellows in this color. So we have this gorgeous stripe effect. And then we're going into just the Yoko colorway, which is this really nice speckle with lots of colors you can see it's just really beautiful and then we're fading into I'm not sure what this was I, I don't remember but it's a really deep brown rich very rich in color it's kind of gray chocolatey dog hair <laughs> and just really these these colors are really true um, and then all the way down to the really nice detail at the bottom where we have the really cool decrease um, so it's kind of angled but I'm going to show you with my wingspan like this I'm I mean this is like so giant I could wrap this around my neck I'm planning on wearing it like this Oops, like this. This is how I'm gonna wear it. Just kidding, I'm not gonna wear it probably like that. I mean, who knows? Uh, but like this though, just kind of with a coat in the winter, it just will look really cool. But then if I'm really cold, I can you know, do it again. 
and then I can just kind of like I just love how it's giant and then a coat when it's cold ah, so excited so this I really like this um, I'm so happy for it to be done to be honest because I liked it kept uh, the color changing and striping really kept you going and it's only a two like a, a two it's a free pattern um, but it's only a two row repeat so it's not hard I mean it's not hard to know if you've made a mistake either because you have all these decreases that line up and increases so you know if you're off which is really nice because there was a couple times that um, I yarn over it in the wrong spots and then I would try to go back and fix it and then I just ended up having to rip it out because I wasn't paying attention but even with that I only did that out of all of 10 feet of this I did that maybe only one or two times but I'm really happy with the way this turned out it blocked so well it was really nice before but it blocked so well and so people who don't really block things like you need to block things because it's makes such a difference i'm sweating like it's this is so hot but even folded in half like i'll fold this in half real quick sorry there's so much fibery stuff on my nose that it's itchy this is folded in half and it's still like my height almost which is just so crazy but um, I'm gonna fold this up because I like how it looks nicely and needed neatly folded um, I just really like this so yeah that is the shockwave shawl awesome so that was my finished object and that's my first finished object in uh, I don't even know in so many weeks months even because um, this was a four skate project and it was almost it was over 1,600 yards of fingering weight, which took quite a while. So that's done. Um, I'll show you my next thing that I've... So these next two objects that I've been working on are works in progress. And I've, you've not seen them yet. If you follow me on Instagram, Pitchfork Fiber, at Pitchfork Fiber, um, on Instagram, you will have seen some acquisitions so I was talking about it in my last podcast but I finally got them in the mail on um, like a day or two after I had podcasted and I thought about just like quickly making a little video of what I have just of the skeins and Hanks still but then I was like I really want to cast it on so I just did so I thought maybe I'll just show you it as a work in progress but then I was knitting and it was so fast I was like I'm gonna finish this before I even show you anything like I'm gonna and that's never happened on the podcast where I start something that you don't know about and then I finish it before I even show you it as a work in progress so I thought I'll just hold off I'll stop knitting it even though I love it I'll stop and work on something else too so I'm gonna show you what I have so far working on this this is the dotted rays shawl by Stephen West. Um, it's really popular right now because of the his kind of um, there's a lot of like fade alongs or knit along faded stuff and so I was going to oh wait I want to show you something real quick this is as this is the yarn that I have left from my skeins this is all the yarn I have left from my skeins from my shockwave shawl not this is not exaggerating this much left in that brown color this I mean I don't know that's probably 18 inches I mean it's so little so I have this left and that's this color the brown so that's that this is how much I have left from the Madeline Tosh the Yoko colorway this is the Madeline Tosh in the Candlewick and this is how much I have left in the beautiful Monet. That's what I'm going to call it, the Monet. So, I mean, all together, that's like nothing. Um, so I literally used every last skein, which is exciting because I like having leftovers, but I wanted to use it all up. So, okay, in this project, I'm going to show you the cakes of yarn first, and then I'll show you the project. I was on Madeline Tosh, quick backstory, I was on MadelineTosh.com just looking up yarn because I want to make an upcoming sweater for, the, I want to work on it in the fall so that it's 
end of summer, beginning of fall, so it's ready by fall slash winter, and I can wear it in Chicago. And I was looking on Madeline Tosh, and I love how they have one-of-a-kind colorways that many times are on sale. And so I was looking, and I saw these two skeins, and I was like, uh, they're so cheap compared to what they normally are, I have to buy them. So I did. And this is the colorway I got. This is a one-of-a-kind colorway. It is speckled gray. It's like a white light like a light base with speckled dark blue, gray, like ink black, and lots of color, like pink, and speckles in this light base. And then it also sh has extreme neon, the neon highlighter colorway. So you can see like right here there's a little bit of pink. Um, I mean there's speckles all over it. Well anyways, that's this colorway. This is the, I got two of these skeins. This is in the DK, Madeline Tosh DK twist. It is so, I love DK weight. I, I like worsted, but it's a little, it's thick. DK is like perfect. It's squishy. It's just, I mean, look at that. Oh, so I had this and then I wanted to do the dotted rays where you stripe in the pattern. It's, I won't give anything away because it is paid for. It's a paid for pattern, but there are Area, there's sections that you work back and forth and then there's like a section every so many rows that you do something different in and I wanted to make that different that kind of um, that row that's different I wanted to do that in a contrasting color so it's like striped kind of um, and that's in the pattern it tells you when to do that but you could do it all one color but I wanted to do the stripes so I had a, some DK uh, yarn some wool that I had this is from a sweater I made this yarn was from a sweater but I actually dyed I bought like I don't know 2,000 yards or something of DK weight yarn and I only dyed up maybe 1,500 of them in this really bright color kind of chartreuse color for a sweater and then I had some extra and in my fiber class I was playing around and I wanted to do some indigo so I dyed up some DK, it's kind of more of a rough, um, not rough, but more of a, what's the word, rough wool? I don't know. It's more of a hand, it, the hand of it is a little bit scratchier, but it's more durable, kind of a hard bearing wool versus this super soft plush. But anyways, this is in, in indigo. And I dyed this myself in an indigo vat. And it's really pretty. This is the color. It's really deep. I mean, a deep, deep indigo. Beautiful. And together, they look just absolutely amazing. Well, I started out... I'm going to show you first. And then you can see. Now, I'm, this is... I don't have a very long cord. Um, so it's going to be a little scrunched but you'll get the picture I guess this is where you start kind of over here and then you work out like this and so it's oh my goodness let me make sure nothing's falling off the needles okay so yeah look at those colors I mean this is so bright and it's really long it's just all scrunched up but I think this is going to block out really nice well as well because there's these really beautiful um, details with the holes. I wonder if you can see it, like, can you see those holes? Let me put something dark behind it, maybe you can see. Do you see the holes, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. There you go, you can kind of see them. Well, those are the eyelets that are really beautiful that kind of go throughout the whole thing. So I love the pattern. Um, however, I'll talk about it for a second. I love the I love the 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 pattern is really um, easy to follow. Like it's not hard. But for some reason, I just kept misreading the pattern. It's one of those things where you read it and you're like, "Oh, this is what I'm supposed to do," and you do it, and then you're like, "Hmm, this doesn't seem right," and then you just keep doing it, and then you're like, "This isn't right." And then you go back and reread it and you just like can't see the mistake you've made until then all of a sudden it clicks and you're like, 
why didn't I know, like think of, why did I not realize that I'm doing this so wrong before? So I was, um, it had told you to turn, like work, there's short rows, it tells you to work a, to a point, turn around and to do the short row, but I kept going back to the same point, so I kept like, I wasn't doing short rows, I was just, I don't know, it was weird and it was becoming really strange and then finally I just tore it out and started over and I had gotten pretty far, I just, but it's in DK, so whatever, it was a day of work, but I just tore it back and because I thought, and I did make a little mistake on here, um, this section, so this is all in the indigo, and then this is every other row should be striped, or every two rows striped uh, between the indigo and the, ah, I'm losing a stitch, the indigo and the neon. But down here, I kind of screwed up, like, it doesn't go every other, there's like some spots down here, I mean, it. Like you can see right here, this neon is in the blue section, this should be all blue, all the way down to here, but it's not, but I don't care, I kind of started up right about here, I kind of got the, the hint, and then d it was fine, but, I mean, no big deal, I don't care, it's still really awesome, that's just a really tiny detail. But I don't know how big I want to make this because I have this much more. But I feel like once this is blocked, if I do block this a little bit, like more than just soaking it, if I do kind of block it so you can see these uh, eyelet details, it's going to block pretty big. And I don't want, like, because this is a DK, if it's super giant, it's going to be like a. <laughs> it's going to end up being like a blanket on my neck. So I thought maybe just not use all of this and then I can use this for like a brioche hat or something, or a hat. I don't know. But then I wanted to talk about this too because I dyed this myself and I love the color and I think it really plays off of the um, kind of blue ink spots in this, like the kind of that blue, it pulls the blue out, which I think is a great, because if you know um, color theory, uh, yellow, the the um, complementary color to yellow is actually um, purple, and orange is to blue. However, with such a bright yellow, and this is an indigo, so it is has those kind of deep blue, it, it still is close enough to be like a really opposite color on the color wheel, and it really pulls out all of those um, really lovely colors. So I don't know. We'll see how this turns out. However, this was, I dyed this in, I think I did four or five dips in indigo. So if you don't know about indigo, indigo is not like normal dye. When dyeing something like this, they are using um, acid dyes and it's used with heat. So the um, in any type of dyeing of wool, you're, you have to use some sort of um, heat to expand the fiber. The fiber is expanded and then it allows um, the, the dye to kind of soak in. And so with this, it is with a, a process that's not like indigo, which is a natural kind of dye. Uh, it is a natural dye. These are using acid, which is like chemical, and they're put in a, some sort of hot, um, they're got, they are in some sort of pot or something to get hot. And then the acid is put in with a lot of other, um, it's like a, a binder, something kind of like uh, citric acid or or something like that to kind of or vinegar people use vinegar and then um, it cools and it's it works but you can use all sorts of different stuff and you basically just like the more um, at the the more concentrated the mixtures that you're putting with the acid dye in the darker the color but for this if you um, if you were to dip this in to a like if you had cotton fabric, for example, like a, a t-shirt, and you were to dip it into blue dye, the longer it sits in the blue dye, the deeper the color is gonna be. But with indigo, 
doesn't matter how long it's in the bath for it because um, indigo is not this color until it comes out of the mixture and oxidizes so when you're working with indigo it comes out a really dark green color it would be like really dark this color um, and then once it hits oxygen so once it comes out of the bath the dye pot or the bath um, it turns this color and the amount of dips you do is the dark is how you get this dark rich color and so I did four or five dips which is quite a lot and then that means that I have a lot to rinse out I had to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse to get this to go clear well I started to work with it and as I was like you can even see just from handling this my fingers are turning kind of blue do you see my fingertips like they're kind of blue that's not poor circulation that's from this so when i was working with this i was like oh goodness this is blue if i wear it with like something like this it's gonna get on this that's gonna turn blue so i re-skeined this into a hank and then i washed it really really well and then i brought took it out and not a lot came out and so it's kind of annoying because i washed it really good with and it didn't bleed a whole lot, but it's rubbing off on my fingers. So it's kind of annoying. However, I do think because it's not used that spra it's used pretty sporadically, it won't rub off. I'll just have to be careful about this section right here, but I think that will be fine. So, cause it's the end, this is the part that will be mostly touching my neck and my shirt. So it should be cool. But yeah, this is awesome, and I'm so excited. I'll keep you updated with how big I make it and everything, but I'm excited for that. This has taken like no time at all. So, oh my goodness, I've been talking for so long. Okay, I s let's move on to the next object. And because I was wanting to kind of hold off on this to show you guys, I started, I picked up a project that I have worked on for years. I think I started this in 2000 and I started this in 2013 or and I started this in 2013 because I remember I was living I remember I was living in a certain place and I started it then. So, I started it then and I wanted to make a an afghan. So, before I really got into before I got into knitting a lot, I crocheted often because it w went so much faster. Like, I was very intimidated with knitting large things or like a blanket or something because it would take forever. I mean, it would take forever and you would need a m like a cord this long. I mean, it just would take forever. So I took up crocheting and I had been crocheting since I was quite little, but it just was easier for me and I could go really fast and it would go much quicker. Well, once I got more efficient with knitting, I realized that I liked the look of knit way more than crochet. But I had started this afghan in my school colors um, of maroon and gold, and I wanted this for my, like just at, for my, my bed or something when I was um, in college. And so I started it, and then I just like never really wanted to work on it, because I got more into knitting, and I just put it away. And so I was looking through some of my old projects, and I was like, hey, I could pull this out again, because I wanted to work on something. I was thinking about making the other sock to my Valentine's Day socks, because, well, that's long overdue. However, I can't find my sock needles, my Carbon's US size ones. I don't know where they are. I knew where they were at my old place, I moved, now I don't know where they are, so I have to just wait until I move again to find them, I don't know. We'll f figure it out. But I have this, and I worked on, I did almost one and a half stripes since I picked this up last. So we start off with black, so we just have like a, and this is just double crochet. So we have black, and then we move into the maroon maroon and then into the gold and then into the gray so it's just stripes right now it's and um because it's pretty wide oh there goes my hook um because i um wanted this for my bed i wanted it to be pretty big 
And so I just was, I just kind of thought, oh, I'll work on it every year and, you know, every once in a while. Um, so I have this right now to here, and I have run out of gray so far. So I don't know if I'm going to just stop and leave it a shorter stripe. But um, I also thought it'd be really cool to then do like some stripes of the granny square stripes. So right now it's just, it's just the double crochet back and forth. I'll show you in the yellow, it might be easier to see. Um, this is just double crochet, and the double crochet is super simple. But it's kind of, excuse me, it's kind of boring. Like, just a double crochet afghan, eh. So I thought about doing double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and then doing a large ch section about this much in the middle of the blanket of like the granny square stripe where you do a row of granny square so you do like three you do three into the same stitch and then you skip two or three and then you do it's the grant like what everyone's been doing on podcasts the granny square but I will do one stripe of one color of maybe black and then one stripe of yellow and then it so it'll look like cool I don't know. It'll just be a break of this monotonous kind of look of waffly. This looks kind of waffly, and I want to break it up. So I'm thinking about doing that. I just need more colors because I've run out. So, and this is so scrappy. This is not like gonna look. I don't really want it to look. I want it to be almost random. I think that makes it look more fun. But yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, it's probably about five feet so far like wide so yeah it's but I, I mean I want it to be pretty big because I'll either put it on my couch or something when I uh, or on my bed or just kind of use it as a spare blanket or something but something just to work on I was watching movies and the other day I was watching Divergent which is such a good movie like I read the book and I really like it anyways that's that. So right now, that's all I've been working on. That took a really long time, and that was a lot of talking. I'm so sorry. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. Um, I have a couple of other things that I want to work on. I, if you watch my last video, go check that out. You'll get to hear a little bit more about some of the projects I want to work on. Um, and mostly I want to do a color work yoked a color work yoke sweater so that's something I want to work on but I also was watching Christy Glassnitz and her podcast and she was wearing randomly in this episode a long time ago a really cool green um, and all green and then white fair isle kind of or color work Christmas hat and I think that's something that I want to make so just in the back of my head I want to make a really cool like not Christmas green it was like a really bright green and I liked the look of it it was kind of like a cool hip modern Christmas hat that was not not super vintage where it looks like it could be old but it was super modern but with a vintage color work pattern so it looked really cool I think it would be fun to do the color work in a, something super contrasty I don't know but that's something I'm just keeping in the back of my head so that's all I've been working on um, I guess I'll move on to uh, move on to just some kind of talk about what's going on um, as you know I'm moving to Chicago like I said I'm moving in about two weeks so right now my I'm in my living room and it is just kind of a mess with things because I'm starting to pack up because I have to really be packed this week I have to pack I have maybe four or five days more to pack because when I by Wednesday I'm leaving for Ohio for a week because I'm competing in my first half Ironman ah. So that's been stressful because I've had just so much go wrong kind of in the last few days that I'm just like, okay, I don't even want to think about it because it stresses me out and I need to not be stressed at this moment because I'm about to tackle a very long endurance race and I don't want to be stressed about it or too nervous. So with doing, with moving states, 
I'm moving across the half. I'm moving all the way across the country from Arizona to Illinois, basically. I'm going to Ohio and doing an Ironman, a half Ironman. I'm coming back for four days and then I'm packing up and driving across the country, moving all of my stuff and getting everything settled in my next place all within two weeks and finishing up my job. So I have like all these things. I have work that's finishing up and I have a pretty big project to work on with that. Packing my stuff, getting ready for the Ironman, traveling to Ohio, doing the Ironman, coming back, traveling to Illinois, packing my stuff, unpacking it. It's just a lot. So I've been like ah, all over the place. But with the Ironman, I have to ship my bike home. And so I was planning on not flying with it. So if any of you are bikers out there, um, you would know, but if you aren't aware, um, traveling with a bike on an airplane is a really kind of ridiculous process because it's overweight. Most of the time, your bike, when you pack it and everything, it becomes overweight. And if you don't pack, and that's, if you pack it in like a case or something, like a hard case you buy at a store, if they're like $900, plus they're like 30 pounds, and then with your bike in it, it becomes overweight. So it's overweight, plus it's oversized. So it costs about $75 oversized baggage fee, plus another like 50 to 100 for overweight. I mean, it's ridiculous. So it could be like $200 one way to ship your bike on an airplane. Plus, it's just the way that those handlers handle packages. I don't want my expensive bike, you know, being just tossed into a plane. So I found this web, I found this company called Bike Flights, which ships via, via ground transportation through um, a carrier. And this, this one is FedEx. And I just pack up my bike in a box and I then have it outside my house and then they go pick it up and they ship it to my next location. So I did that and I was supposed to have it shipped on Friday, yesterday, and I spent all day Thursday basically like, because you can't just put a bike in a box, like I have to take the entire thing apart. So I had to take the handlebars off, I had to take the, the kit real rear derailleur off, my wheels off, I had to take my pedals off and we had to pack everything so well to put it in a cardboard box that's only nine, well this one's only eight inches wide and then pretty big. So this right here is the box actually. If you can see it, you can't, I don't know if you can really see it, but this is the box. It's not very, then my whole bike is inside of this. And uh, I spent a lot of time trying to logistically figure out how am I going to fit my, bo my bike in here in a way that is not damaging or um, kind of altering the integrity of the of it because I don't want anything to get smashed or break. Well, I was told that the bike company or the bike flights was going to pick it up any like any time between the morning and 6 p.m. So basically, like all day. And I didn't want to just and it told you to just leave your bike outside your door and then they'll pick it up. I'm not leaving a couple thousand dollar bike outside of my door just waiting for someone to pick it up because someone could steal it and then I have no bike. So I wasn't going to do that and I need it and I was like, well, from my past experiences, normally FedEx comes in the evening or like mid afternoon, so I'll go swim in the morning, run home and put it outside and just wait kind of by the door until the FedEx people come and pick it up and then it'll be fine. Well, they came while I was at swimming and then they didn't tell me that they'd come and I had no notification and so I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and I waited all day for them to come and I never, they didn't come. And then until, and then it's 5.45, it was like maybe 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock and I called customer service, they didn't respond and then I was like, um, I want to know if they've come or, or not because I'll take it, I could just drop it off myself at the location because it needed to be pit in the tr transportation ground shipping area by Friday so that it could get to Ohio by Thursday. Anyways, they didn't come, they'd already come, I didn't know that. 
by the time that I was notified that they did come, it was already 5.50 and all of the ground shipping places close at 6 and I have to take this giant box and somehow fit it in my small car and drive it all the way there and by that time I wouldn't have made it. So, and all the shipping had already been shipped by 4 o'clock. So, now they had to reschedule my pickup date and the reason I had them pick up was because it's so big it doesn't fit in my car. So now I have to wait until Monday for them to pick it up and it won't be shipped until Friday. It won't be delivered until Friday and my race is on Sunday and Saturday is when I have to have my bike in the location checked in for the race on Sunday. So I, that gives me like no time to bike around and really like get used to the roads and everything and so I just was really stressed. Very, very stressed because I was like, if my bike does not get there in time, I don't have a bike to do my Ironman in. So that was stressful. I spent a, a lot of time on the phone calling and trying to figure out what to do and then I'm just gonna have to wait until they pick it up on Monday and I'm not gonna be able to go to work until they pick it up. Ugh, cause I can't just leave a bike sitting outside. Like, no, I can't do that. Not, in, not, no. So that's annoying, but it's gonna be fine. I've just told myself it's gonna be fine. That just means that I have to make sure I use my time wisely when I get to Ohio with like making sure that I can put my bike back together and it's like safe because I don't want to be riding down the road biking and then like something flies off because I didn't put it on properly. Put it back together, so. Oh well. Um, so that was stressful. That was my yesterday. And along with that, um, there's been like crazy monsoons in the evenings here in Arizona. Um, if you don't know what a monsoon or a haboob is, it sounds super silly, like haboob, but look up Arizona Haboobs, H-A-B-O-O-B-S, Haboob. They're like wind storms, dust storms, and basically like all of a sudden it'll be really nice and sunny and then the clouds come over and they're dark like red orange clouds. They kind of cover the sky and it gets really omin ominous and then it just starts to pour and it's like hurricane force winds and it floods very quickly and then all of a sudden it stops. So we've been having a lot of rain and because of that, the humidity and moisture has been much higher. It's normally like 8% humidity in Arizona, but it's been a lot higher, like in the 30s, 40s, 50s. And so um, flies have now somehow gone into my house and they are like, I mean, they're everywhere. There are like flies everywhere. Um, I opened the trash can the other day and I it has a lid on it and I, stepped on it and it popped open and like 20 flies came flying out and I was like this is disgusting so I tried to make a fly trap with like some apple cider vinegar and a funnel and it didn't really work so then this morning before I woke when I woke up I took the trash can outside and then closed the door opened the lid and they flew out but there's still a lot more in the house so I'm gonna just have to try that because I don't want them reproducing and then <laughs> getting all over my Cause they're like landing on my cups and stuff. It's just, it's gross. So I don't, I'll have to figure out if you know any ways of how to get rid of flies in large masses, not just like a fly swatter, I would greatly, that would be greatly appreciated cause I need to kind of figure out how to do that. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I will not, this is my last time podcasting in this location because I have this weekend, I leave for Ohio, I come back, I'm packing up and leaving for Chicago. So the next time you see me, I'll be in Chicago in my new home, apartment, studio, tiny room. <laughs> in my one room studio. But it's gonna be such a great adventure. I'm so excited. Um, I'm really excited that I feel like this podcast has been just me talking to myself. And like just this last just episode seven, like a lot of people started watching a lot, meaning like way more than they had been. And it really surprised me. So if you're watching this, thank you for watching it. It's really unexpected. Um, I just talk a lot to myself. So if you like watching me talk to myself, this is a podcast for you. But hopefully I'll have a lot more time to be knitting. Um, it won't be 100 and 
15 degrees in Chicago, so that's a plus. I'll be able to knit and not be uh, drenched in sweat. Um, also, I'll be able to wear my objects, so the, the motivation for knitting is going to be higher. And there's a lot more like yarn stores and yarny amazing places. So that could be a really fun podcast too, like a vlog of me traveling around the city. I don't know, like l just comment below if you, what you think, think would be a good podcast because I'm always up for suggestions because I just don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just, I sit here and I start and I talk and that's it. So that's going to be it for this episode. I greatly appreciate you coming and visiting me and thanks for watching and staying all the way to the end. Um, if you want to subscribe, just hit the subscribe button and you'll be able to see when I post my next video. Also follow me on Instagram at Pitchfork Fiber. Uh, I post there pretty often. It kind of depends on my week, but I've been posting more frequently, which is good. And um, just have a wonderful rest of your week. It's a weekend here, so enjoy it while you can before your work week starts up again. So get some knitting done and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Have fun and I'll see you in Chicago. Bye.